The endocrine system. When we discuss the endocrine system, you should immediately be thinking about hormones that are produced in the body. Hormones are chemical messengers. And since there are other chemical messengers that we've studied in the past, neurotransmitters specifically, it helps to kind of differentiate hormones from neurotransmitters. So I'm going to talk about the five characteristics that make hormones what they are and also differentiate them um, from neurotransmitters. And I would suggest writing down both characteristics kind of side by side in your notes. Um, a lot of these things will sound maybe very straightforward or maybe very obvious at first or they may sound very foreign, but the idea is, is that when you, the, the more you work with hormones and the more you think about the way that they work, you should always be coming back to these five characteristics and kind of thinking about how they relate to what it is that you're studying. Okay, so the first characteristic of hormones is that they are released into the blood, into the bloodstream, whereas neurotransmitters are released into a synaptic cleft. Hormones are transported throughout the body and they contact most cells of the body. In other words, they contact all cells that are um, uh, that have a vascularity, any of them that have any contact with the blood supply, because hormones are released into the blood, that is the case. Um, and so they contact most of the cells of the body. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, not all cells are target cells, but all of them will be able to, you know, ostensibly receive this signal. Um, with neurotransmitters, the only cell that is contacted is that postsynaptic cell, the cell that's on the other side of the synapse. All right, with hormones, there is a lag period before the cellular response. The lag period could be immediate hours or days. With neurotransmitters, it tends to be much faster than that. We're talking about on the order of milliseconds. It's typically one to two milliseconds for an immediate response. In addition, Hormones have a prolonged response. In other words, the response itself on the target cell will take a lot longer. Um, it could be as little as 10 seconds, but it also could be several hours. That time course is much faster with postsynaptic cells with neurotransmitters. It tends to be, again, on the order of milliseconds rather than even on the order of seconds. And lastly, when we think about hormones, and maybe this would be kind of the key to tie everything together that we're learning in this particular unit, Hormones are responsible for orchestrating big things that happen in the body. Reproduction, development, blood maintenance, metabolism, the kinds of things that your body needs big stories happening inside of your body. And with neurotransmitters, technically the only thing a neurotransmitter does as far as, you know, it's a little bit more complicated than this, but not much more than that. The basic story of a neurotransmitter is that it either causes a postsynaptic cell to become depolarized or hyperpolarized. And that's, that's all that they do. On a case-by-case -case basis, each neurotransmitter release only allows for that one thing to happen. And of course, the story becomes much bigger when you look at many neurons in a network together, you know, or thousands or millions of them working together for a particular goal. However, when you're looking at one neurotransmitter release, it really is as simple as saying that the postsynaptic cell only has that small amount of response.